Welcome to the coolest stuff on the planet. Hey there, Kelly. Uh, we're in Studio 1A right now. Welcome to the podcast. And uh, this is Matt, by the way, uh, your drummer. And uh, joining me today is my co-host, Rachel. How you doing, Rachel? I'm all right. I had some chocolate. I'll, yeah. be, I'll be okay. You're good? I'm ready to go. I'm a little hyper. Today we're checking out what in modern times is called Earth Architecture. Uh, so it's actually the Great Mosque of Genet. Uh, it looks like Jin. Anyone who played Magic the Gathering, it looks like a like a, a Jin, but it's not. It's Genet. And it's actually a famous mud brick religious structure in Mali, West Africa. Mm -hmm. This mud mosque, it's got all the features of a regular mosque, um, but it's made of mud. Mm -hmm. The one we see today, actually, this one here, is not the original, though. Yes. Uh, the first true. one was built in the 13th century by um, the first Islamicized ruler of the area. So the story goes uh -huh. uh, that he actually destroyed this place and then built the first great mosque in its place. Uh, the Great Mosque was the centerpiece of the town. It was a trading center, and uh, it was a center for Islamic scholarship. And uh, it was about six centuries that that actually thrived, right? Right. And then in the 19th century, um, the first mosque was abandoned. A uh, second smaller one was built nearby, um, and that one stood for a while. And then in 1907, the final Great Mosque was built, and that's the one you see today. So here's the deal. The mosque is very susceptible to erosion from monsoons and regular flooding and changes in temperature and humidity all, all around the area. So it needs lots and lots of upkeep. Mm -hmm. It needs some TLC. Exactly, from a lot of people. So every year the locals replaster the mosque before the annual rains and the monsoons in a little spring festival. Mm -hmm. And the festival's called the Fête de Clapissage, which oh. means the festival <laughs> of plastering that the plasterers they climb up on those. You see the little, the little peg-like things, mm -hmm. the decorations. Well, those aren't just decoration; they actually work as scaffolding. Yes. So they climb up on those, mm -hmm. and they uh, they get dirty. Plaster. Yeah, they get dirty. Uh, we need to get Mike Rowe down here or up there, over there. That's true. That'd in be, West Africa. That'd be just his thing. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so speaking of mud, many of the buildings in town are actually made of the same mud in in the same tradition. It's actually an art form that's passed from one generation to the next, and the mud architecture, it keeps houses cool, which is is awesome because it gets a little hot. It's almost ridiculously hot in Mali. Yep. I'm guessing it's probably pretty cheap, too. Mm-hmm. Free mud. Kind of makes me want to make some stuff out of mud. Mud pies? Uh, yeah, you know, I could make a house out of mud. No, I couldn't. I could never do that. Me neither. That's a cool idea, though. This town, which is full of mud architecture, has pretty much been remained the same for, for the last few centuries, except for a few things here and there. The mosque, for example, um, does have a loudspeaker system, mm -hmm. um, and I believe recently uh, it, got, uh, it has fluorescent lights now. Um, and there's actually a movie about the famous mud structures of Genet called The Future of Mud, A Tale of Houses and Lives in Genet. So um, one cool little trivia factoid about... Uh, the, the great mosque that I wanted to share with you all mm. is um, if you look there on the top you notice the the towers the minarets of mm -hmm. the mosque you'll see these tiny little round things um, and those are, those are actually ostrich eggs what and they're supposed to symbolize uh, purity good fortune and in some obscure way of which I'm not aware uh, they they're supposed to protect the mosque from water damage so for another interesting perspective on the GMOD or the great mosque of Genet Take a gander at the Coolest Stuff blog on this topic. You can go to blogs.howstuffworks.com and check it out. For more on this and thousands of other topics, visit howstuffworks.com. And let us know what you think. Email travelpodcast at howstuffworks.com. Don't forget to check out our other podcasts free on iTunes. <laughs>